You know what she's thinking, right? Moses is thinking, man. Look, look, I was reciting it. And I look over at the kid. And the kid's about ready to shout, reciting this. And God got to me, he said, the problem with y'all. You understand words, but you do not understand authority. This is why you been at your house rebuking things in Jesus' name. And nothing happens because you understand words. You do not understand authority. You know what that hit me? You know what that hit me? 
Because we thank him in advance. If you wait on the tent to clear. Christ, 
to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be sitting in the house of the Lord. I did not preach last week, and I'm going to tell you why I did not preach last week. I did not preach last week because I did not have a word really in my belly. I've been pouring and pouring and pouring. And sometimes you can pour to the point that you're empty. And that's why God has people in the house of God to give you a break. Because I'll take it one week. God said, well, I want to go before the people of God empty. I want to always have something to give the people of God. And I thank God for having a cadre of ministers and elders that can, can take up the slack whenever I need to go back and replenish. And I say, Lord, when I go before the people of God, I want to have something to say. I am not so in love with my own voice that I will say anything, but I have to have something to say. And I begin to pray and seek God. Y'all better hear me. And God talked to me about decisions. Yes. And so I'm in a new sermon series, and I know, I know you're going to, I believe you're going to be blessed by this, because I've been blessed by this already. And we're going to talk about decisions. Because I was really hit by what Dr. Maddie Mouse Clark told her daughter. Baby, all you can do is play piano and make poor decisions. That's what she told him. And the mouth was just honest, right? She had sold all that, those, those rights to the song. She said, baby, all you do is play the piano and make poor decisions. Didn't give a poor decision. Couldn't give the last O and the R. <laughs> so you make poor decisions. We give up to God, Apostle Baker, give up Mother Baker, we give up to all our elders, ministers, saints, and friends. Amen. Uh, but, 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 I begin to think about that, and God says, Daniel, tell the people of God to make good decisions. Because decisions are powerful. Y'all still good ground? Still good ground? Yeah. You're walking your horn right now, this will be okay. Hesitate, hesitation when making a decision results in a lack of necessary speed. Hesitation when making a decision results in a lack of necessary speed. Uh, it says, how long will you go limping between two different opinions? You cannot advance to your goal if you have not decided what you will do. Until you make a decision, you will limp and you will not run. And no one can move expeditiously until they decide to move. Somebody say decide. decide. Being indecisive results in handicap progression. Uh, see, the Bible says that you will limp when you should be running because decisions are powerful things. How powerful is a decision? Mindsets produce potential, but decisions determine destiny. I'll say it one more time. Your mindset produces your potential, but a decision will determine your destiny. It can be in your mind to live a healthy lifestyle. It's in mind. It's in my mind. As long as I'm looking at the mirror straight ahead, I'm good. But when I turn to the side, I say, Oh, I gotta live a healthy lifestyle. I gotta do something about this. And then, and then, and then I go home and pick up my papa. Look at my papa. And he always says, Look at what you go go to now. Look what's coming for you when you get older. He always picks me that way. So it's in my mind to live a healthy lifestyle. But, but you can be convinced that you need to do it. The doctor can tell you, hey, you, you gotta change. Some of us are all about weight, but sometimes the, the, the doctor is telling us, you gotta slow down. Amen. You gotta get some rest. You're wearing yourself out. And, and he can tell us those things, and you can be convinced, yes, doc, I understand, I need to do those things. But, but however, your mindset doesn't change until you decide, somebody say decide, to live a healthy lifestyle. You can be convinced that you need to commit fully to Christ, but until you decide, changes. There are some people that are convinced they should live right before God. They are convinced that they are wrong in what they're doing. But they nothing will change in their life until they decide that I will do what I'm convinced to do. We usually have no problem knowing the right decision. Our problem comes when we have to make the right decision. The biggest battle that you will face is eternal and it is not external. You see, being between two opinions is being caught between two opposing mindsets. A decision cannot be made until the mind changes. That is internal. And too often we believe that our decision is external. That is, I 
out there. But the reality of it is, it's within us. It doesn't matter what goes on around you or what factors are stacked up against you. If you have a mind to do something, the decision, uh, the decision will be made to do those things. You have to win the battle of your mind. I was convinced. Here, here, I was convinced. I sat inside of class my freshman year and I had a great history professor and I saw what he did. I said, you know what? I want to do that. Amen. I went to college. I did not know what I want to do for a job. And some people had that great focus. I did not have that kind of focus. I was not that uh, disciplined yet. But when I went into the college course and I saw uh, the professor, the his name, Professor Chambers, I thought the Chambers was teaching. I said, I want to do that for a living. And, and, and I was convinced that I'm going to be a college instructor. I heard the stats on how few jobs were open. It's not a very wide market right now because when people get in those jobs, they either retire or they die. They don't get those jobs up very often. So I knew that we didn't have any jobs open. And I knew a large number of people applied just for part-time adjunct work. We have sometimes 30 people waiting on one class. To teach one class. I knew all these things. But guess what? It didn't matter. My mind was made up. Y'all oh, better give me inside of you. My mind was made up and I was convinced to do it. The decision was made. It is hard to fight the circumstances and your mind at the same time. The mind must be put in the subjection. It is hard for me to go and do what needs to be done to get what I want to get if I gotta fight the and still trying to convince myself in my mind. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm preaching to somebody. I'm preaching to somebody. The truth of the matter is, you're not just fighting what you see in the world, you're also fighting what goes on in your mind. That's why I had to be over there. I was beginning to pray because I said, Lord, I'm going to preach this word. I got to make sure everything together. And God said, No, no, you got to say, No, I have studied. God better give me. I have worked on this. I have submitted myself. And guess what? It's not on me anyway, it's on God. And so, therefore, I had to remind myself because I don't want to fight what's going on in my head. When you win the battle that rages internally in your mind, you are ready to make a decision. This is why some people get saved, hear me, and stay on fire for God for years. Huh. Can I be real in this house? I grew up knowing uh, Greta, Greta's mother. I grew up knowing her, and I know how powerful she was in the, in the, in the faith, and I Knowing her, knowing her, and guess what? She was always on fire for God. And I learned something that some people can get saved and be on fire for God and for years, and others are lukewarm at their best. Amen. On your best day, you are caught between two of it. In the height of revival, everybody's shouting, everybody's moving. You still trying to figure out, do I want to praise God? You know what I learned? Both of those people made a decision. Yeah. Yeah. In church, we like to say, well, you ain't going to feel good every day. You're not going to uh, 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 just be glory, glory every day. But what the Bible says that uh, uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. It's not about how I feel. I can choose to be on fire. <laughs> Be on fire. God didn't like that one. You can decide to be on fire and stay in love with God. Do you know I, I, I'm in love with my wife? I'm committed to my wife. Do you know why I chose to do that? She chooses to be in love with me. Baby, we ain't continuing no more. We ain't continue no more. We just feel this stuff in the pity of stomach. And you feel a butterfly. No, no, no. We have to choose to stay in love. We must decide that we will be committed to one another. I will tell you before that someone asked me, Are you married? I said, Yes, I'm married. So, Are you happily married? I told him, It does not matter. I choose to be committed. No matter if I'm happy or not, I choose. I choose to stay on fire for God. Do you feel good in your 
soul. It don't matter if you're my soul. I choose to still be on fire for God. Choose to stay in love with God. So, so you can decide to be lukewarm and have one foot in the world. There's a choice. Don't blame nobody about that. That's your choice. That's a choice that you made. You see, both are decisions and they are very powerful. You see, making decisions requires you to face reality. Somebody say reality. Yeah. Reality is what it is. Not what you want to be is what it is. <laughs> you see, the Lord is God, follow him, but it's Baal that follow him. Once you know what is and what isn't, the decision is easy. Because actually making the decision is what is hard. You see, at what point do you realize what is real about yourself and about your life? Uh, at what point do you realize what God wants for you is better than what you want for yourself? That's reality. At what point do you realize that you're only wasting your time fighting a decision that needs to be made? Yes. Wasting your time fighting making a decision. You can run, but you cannot hide from decisions. And not deciding is a decision. Yes, that is. That's important. In this season, God is calling upon his people to be to become intentional and decisive. Somebody say intentional yes. and decisive. Yes. Revelation 3 and 16 says, So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Yes. And, and, and I begin to look at me. I cannot preach to you. Until I preach to myself. And I begin to say, Lord, how many times have I been lukewarm, apathetic, not caring, going with the wind? And God says, I don't care if you're Elder Baker. I don't care if you're apostle, if you're bishop, if you're minister. I don't care if you're mother, trustee, deacon. I don't care how long you've been on this walk. I don't like lukewarm water. And not only do I not like lukewarm water, I reject lukewarm water. And so God said, Daniel, I don't care, how better give me how you feel. You better be either hot or cold. Preach. This is a season, y'all. We can no longer blame God for what we don't have or what we did not accomplish. It was simply because we were apathetic, did not care, and we were indecisive. Yeah. Your life will change when you make a decision. Now, hear, hear, hear me. Once a decision is made, you must commit to it. So I say commit. Yeah. I love this scripture because Joshua was successful because he was committed to the decision. He was committed to it. In Joshua 24 and 14, it says, Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve, and, and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. You don't like it, make a choice. Whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whom land, whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, come on, God. Come on. we will serve the Lord. Yes, Lord. There must come a point in your life where you decide that what other people do is on them, but that you will do whatever it takes to please God in every aspect of your life. I will say that one more time. For all my people who say the church ain't this, people ain't doing that. You got to get to a place in your life. It don't matter what they're doing. I made a decision that I will do whatever it pleases, whatever it takes to please God in every aspect of my life. I cannot determine my life based on what you are doing. If it seems evil to serve God, make a choice. If you're not convinced that he's good, make a choice. But as for me and my all y'all better hear me. Joshua saw the good in the land. That's why Joshua could do it. He was one of those spies. Remember him and Caleb? They went in and saw the good in the land. They saw people picking grapes and it took two people to carry one cluster of grapes. Now I know y'all go to the grocery store. Get that packet of grapes inside of there. Could you imagine and say, look, son, you come help me bring these grapes to the front of the line? They saw a land flowing with milk and honey. 
And once you see that, hear me. Once you see that, and you know that, because he knew the blessings and favor that rested on those that served God and did what God commanded. He actually saw that if we do what God wants to do, this is what we're going to get. This gave him, uh, th therefore, he was committed to the decision. This gave him success. How much have you committed to your decision to follow God? I know you said one 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 revival night you the church was on fire with the Holy Ghost too. I know it was, and I know that night you decided you're gonna live for God. But what did you commit to that? What did it cost you? I'm always preaching to my son. Well, my son is, is driving the car now, and you know now he I told him you know about the oil change. He said, "Well, Dad, I got to put gas in the car and do all this and change the oil too." I said, "Son, a car is a responsibility." And if you want it to work, you got to commit some things to that car. Yes, right. So if you want your relationship with God to work, there's some things that you got to commit. Oh, right. it's quiet in this house. What do you do daily that you sac? What do you daily sacrifice to please Him? You cannot blame your failures on God if you have never truly committed to Him. Except that pastor, I guess my Holy Ghost didn't work. I, I went back into the world. No, 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 no. You just weren't committed. Wherever there's a failure in an area that God promised success, it's not negligence on God's part. It's a failure to commit on our part. Whatever God says, you're going to see success. You're going to see prosperity. You're going to see growth in that area. If I don't see that in that area, it is not about what God did not do. It's about what I did not commit. Amen. We'll go to the end of the five verse of 2 Corinthians 1 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Savannah, until Timothy, was not yes and no, but has proved to be yes in him, true and faithful, in the divine yes affirming God's promises. For as many as are the promises of God in Christ, they are all answered yes. So through him, we say our amen to the glory of God. We know this scripture is being in God, all the promises are yes and amen. Do you know what that means? God's already committed to what he's going to do for you. Amen. So it's not about what God is going to do, it's about me. Yeah. Commitment is revealed through putting everything behind your decision. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That means that everything in Joshua's responsibility, everything that, was that Joshua had control over, was going to be committed to God. Amen. Everything. Somebody say everything. Amen. Somebody say everything. 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 everything that Joshua had control over, he said, I'm going to commit those things to God. All of his resources were committed to God. When we, true, when we are truly sincere and faithful, we put everything that we have to the success of our decision. Luke 9 and 62, Jesus said it to them, to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Did I say that Jesus said that? He says, you may want salvation, but are you fit for the kingdom? You may want blessings, but are you fit for the kingdom? And what God is saying, he says, I need some people that make a decision and commit everything to that decision. That when God, when, I, when you say, well, I decide I'm going to submit to what you said for me to do, everything that I have will be pushed toward the success of that decision. And God says, if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Yes, amen. And what we have put this on, I'm going to be here. I'm going to walk here. We place this scripture, this scripture on backsliders. Because we are very myopic in our view of the word of God. This is for backsliders that you know. They look back. No, baby, they just stop, they just stop coming to church. Because some of us sitting inside of here look back every day. I knew I was good. Some dog slow claps on that one. I knew I was. We don't like when we talk about us. Then we commit, well, I'm going to be in Sunday school, and then we don't do it. 
Lord, I'm going to be over this ministry if we don't do it. Lord, I'm going to read the Bible every night and then we don't do it. I'm going to get up and pray every morning and we don't do it. Y'all better hear me. And God says, if you decide to do it and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Now! Now go ahead and look at that backslide. And when you look at them, guess what? You're going to see a mirror looking back at you. When God tells you to go forth and do something, then the circumstances make you begin to rethink yourself. Oh, uh, I, I, I know. I, 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 I plan on fasting that day. But, but, but they cook the best meal. And it's so rude to tell them I can't eat today. God, I'll fast tomorrow. Am I in the house? Yes, sir. Am I knocking on your door? Can I be real as how here? God says, I need people that when you decide to do the will of God, you do the will of God. Stop looking back all the time. Stop changing your mind all the time. Say, Lord, I'm going to give you my all. Get this, get this. If you want to be victorious, you have to stick with your decision. If you want to be victorious, you got to stick with it. We give up before we give the decision time to be fruitful. Yeah. Oh, you better hear me. We say, Lord, it's not working. It's not working. God said, you did not even give it time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. And so, so, and for the decision to be fruitful, we have to commit everything that we have to it to success. Back up your, your decision with commitment. Yeah. Jesus, well, God decided that he's going to save all of us. Yes. He decided he'd save all of us. But to begin to put the decision into action, he said, what can I give them to prove that I'm 100% all in on this? He took his only begotten son. Y'all better hear me. Sent him in the likeness of sinful flesh. He that knew no sin was made sin because of us. And his own son died on the cross. That was commitment. Yeah, yeah. Those of y'all who say, well, that's not a description. He said, he said that we all gonna bear a cross. Do you know we all gonna bear a cross? Can I tell you something inside of you? This is for your spiritual life, for your natural life. That if you have not put forth the necessary action behind your decision, do not go to God and say, God, it didn't work. It's on you. God said, no, it ain't on me, baby. It's on you. Because the promises of God are yea and amen. Y'all better hear me. It's already been settled. Somebody say decisions. I'm my last one. Do you believe that? The power of the disciple. The power of the decider. The decider aren't easily swayed or deterred. Do you know my first sermon? This is my scripture. I never forget it. This is this is the scripture. I was praying and, and, and this was my thing in scripture, my first sermon. Romans 8 38 said, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any creature. Shall be able to separate us, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you truly decide to obey the will of God for your life, you become somebody that's persuaded. Persuaded. Isn't it very hard to argue with someone that is persuaded? Just waste your time, don't you? They believe something they're going to believe they want to believe. God, and Paul said, you know what? At the end of my life, oh, I love this. <laughs> At the end of my life, I, I, I've done all these things. I've preached. I've lived my whole life. At the end of my life, I am persuaded. Y'all put it in me. To be persuaded is to move by argument, intrigue, or expostulation, to a belief, to a position, or to a course of action. Simply put in it to be convinced. At what point will you be convinced that God is not a man that you should lie? When will you become, become, become convinced that you are a new creature because you are in Christ Jesus? When will you be convinced that there has been no weapon formed that can prosper against you? When will you be convinced that if God be for you, who can be against you? When will you be convinced that you are a part of a called out body called the church that even the gates of hell cannot prevail against? It's important to be convinced so you can decide to commit. Can I give you this word in 
move on. The reason why it's hard to get people to decide to commit is because they are not yet convinced. They are not yet convinced. This is why they come back to us and tell us that someone can pray on them and change their future. Don't tell about what you're going through. Someone will be praying against you. Who they praying to? It's God of two minds. So, 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 if I'm praying for something, and the sky is praying against what I'm praying for, to the same God, how does that work? When y'all find this scripture in the verse, I stop preaching. How does that work? How does that work? Who are they praying to? God of the two minds. The Bible says he is a free person, they have the same mind. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they are one. So who are you praying to? Who are you praying to? But they can pray to the devil. I thought, greater is he. Until we get to a point where we can be fairy tales out of our head and stop saying stupid things that when we're supposed to be grown up Christians. Until we get to that level, God said, it's certain that I won't give y'all. Amen. Because you have made me come saved, but voodoo. Come on. Come on. Great grandma and grandma was dead. It's just a power of your mind. Can I preach to somebody real quick? Culture is sometimes stronger than the anointing. Y'all yeah. believe me? Let me mess up and say we're gonna have Sunday, we're gonna have our church service on Monday morning instead of Sunday morning. Now why Sunday morning? Culturalize. Our culture is that's when we go to church. And if I told you, well, God said so we're gonna do it on Tuesday night, no. I just don't believe in that. I don't see that. Culture. That's why culturally we'll say, don't tell somebody what you're praying for. Yeah. They're going to pray against you. Preach uh-huh. now. Yes, sir. Who is more powerful? That's right. Who is? That's right. I said, you know. That's right. And the reason why that you believe that, you're not yet convinced that he is all power. That's right. Oh, that's right. You're not yet convinced that he's all your power. Amen. 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 And that scripture and verse on that one. Amen. That is the problem with the house of God. Get this. And that's why we can't decide. Because we're not convinced. And until you decide, you cannot commit. And when you are decided, you cannot be easily swayed or deterred no matter what comes against you. That is the power of a decision. We we married this house. We married this house. We know people that when they make their mind up, that is it. There's certain things. And when Reddle say it's gonna happen, now I'm not a man of the house. I'm not preaching. I know. Come on. I know. But there's sometimes you say, we're gonna do this. Uh-huh. I've been praying and, I, and if God did not tell me it's a wrong decision, guess what? We're gonna do that. And y'all can talk about me all y'all want to. Call me a weak man all you want to. I pray. Because when she gets very convinced about something, God must have put something inside of her. So before I come against it, I gotta pray. And she knows that he must have been praying because if it's not of God, then God will heal her. That's right. That is the power of a decision. Right. And the good thing about them is that all America was inside of here. When y'all ever get together on the decision, ooh, one can put a thousand in the flight, two can put ten thousand in the flight. I don't care if everybody in the office is praying against you. I don't care if everybody in your family is praying against you. I don't Of the earth. 
And I will, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Even if you don't even want them, he said, I'm going to still bless you with them. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, there is no point in reading any of the blessings that follow the scripture if you have not decided to be in covenant relationship with God. Are y'all ready for it? You blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Yes, 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 yes. That's there. That's there. It's there. But there's no point in me reading those things if you're not committed. And that's why people say the prosperity gospel does not work. No, no, no. It, just, it works. It works. It's a gospel. It works now. It works. I'm telling you right now. It works. If you are in relationship. Because if you are in relationship, are oh, y'all going to hear me? You're not after the prosperity. You're after God. And because you got God, God gives you prosperity. I say it one more time. The gospel, it works. Because if you're truly after the gospel, after God, then you are going to get God. And the result of getting God is because you can obey what God says. All these blessings shall overtake you.
years old. Y'all pray for my boys. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to let you guys get out of here. I want y'all to hear what I got to say real quick. In this season, it ain't going to be about what you got a mind to do. It ain't going to be about what's in your spirit. Because if we were honest, there's a lot of stuff that's in our spirit that we don't do. Is it just me other the sins? Is it just me? Am I the only one like that? Or maybe that's you too. Amen. That God has called some things from you. Mm-hmm. And it's in your spirit. But you've not yet decided to do it. You've not decided to walk out again. You've not decided to submit yourself to it. It's nobody else's fault. Stop talking about people praying against you and doing this. Baby, no weapon form. Look, 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 look. That's Old Testament stuff. In the Old Testament, he said, no weapon form against you shall prosper. So, that's Old Testament, he said that. So, we know that's how to be good. Look at, look at this, look at this. In this church, I want to pray for some people. Because some of y'all got ministry. And we based on your decision to go forth and do what God calls you to do. Some of y'all got some decisions to make. Stop being between two opinions. Put some effort towards something. Put some effort. I don't want to start calling names, but I saw one of the ministers out here that had a classroom. Well, part of three y'all got classrooms. That they were teaching like one student, two students. And I saw the student that came in this morning. I was like, Lord have mercy. But you know what it happens? Somebody decided I'm not quit. That's what happened. Somebody decided, you know what? I got two. I'm going to give them my best. They don't come and say, Pastor, me and Kathy like one and two, so I'm out with this city side of the regular audience here with everybody else today. They showed up. See, if you make a decision now, God is preparing you for what's going to come later on. Some of y'all say right now, I'm, I'm preaching to my people, you're talking about giving and those, those things. But all my, my time ain't going to be no big deal. It ain't going to change nothing. Decide to be faithful over that which you're going to get. Decide. Decide. Decide to be faithful inside of what you do inside this house. This house can be blessed. We have decided people that say, you know what? I, I pass, you ain't got to worry about encouraging me. You never about pulling me up. No, it's okay. I'll decide I'm going to do this. Oh, I don't to get nobody on that one. Evangelist, come on up real quick. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Some of y'all know right now, God's called y'all to help with evangelism. God's called y'all to help out with evangelism. If that is you, now, you got to decide, you got to pray about it, go and pray about it. If that is you.